Get Charlie. Da Vinci Resolve has developed into a powerful and flexible grading platform throughout the course of its existence. It now provides users with hundreds of options for modifying and improving the look and quality of the moving picture. But even with this broad ecosystem, the majority of us only become familiar with a handful of tools that are effective for us, and the remaining tools remain largely underutilized. There are already tools available in DaVinci Resolve to adjust hue, brightness and saturation individually. Still, with the addition of the Color Warper in Resolve 17, colorists, filmmakers and cinematographers gained a powerful new way to target and manipulate specific hue and tonal ranges to create and refine dynamic looks. Behind the scenes, the tool uses new color space-aware mathematics to make color remapping easier while maintaining a high standard of quality. In our new set of tutorials, we'll dive deeper into the Color Warper tool and explore its interface, modes, interactions with the project's requirements, practical applications, and, of course, look creation. On our timeline, we already have two different sets of footage. This shot comes in first, followed by this one. Our goal is to match the dense blue sky of the first shot with the second shot. And through this, we are going to illustrate the usefulness of the Color Warper tool over the Hue versus Hue and Hue versus Saturation sliders. Let's quickly grab a still of the first shot so that we have a reference over here to wipe and see what we have to achieve in terms of color match. You can see the shot on the left showcases much more saturation and a much more bright blue sky as compared to the shot on our right. So let's try to achieve and match this denser blue sky on our shot with the use of our hue versus sat and hue versus hue curves. We're going to select the blue range and we're going to increase it. Then we're going to rotate the hue so that the image becomes a little bit teal in color. Then let's go to hue versus saturation, select the blue range and bump the saturation up. This seems good. Now let's go to hue versus luminance and here we're going to select the hue. Then we're going to increase the brightness or luminance of that hue. Note, brightness and luminance are two mathematically different terms, but just for simplification, we're going to refer to the brightness and luminance as one and the same. So, let's go ahead and increase the luminance of this shot and also adjust, just slightly, the hue rotation just a bit. Yeah, this seems good. So, this approach is a basic approach to match and create a denser blue sky on our shot by using a hue versus hue slider in DaVinci Resolve. It is important to note that these valuations are exact and subjective to the shot. The reason why somebody would pick a particular hue to change and adjust only arises when we are doing a shot match. In this stage, our look is predefined. We only have to iron out shot match inconsistencies between shots with different lighting conditions, for example. So over here, you can see that it's a fairly complicated approach. We guessed where our shot's hue range would be and had to manipulate three curves all at once to get the right hue, saturation and luminance to the right ballpark range in our shot. Let's try another approach, the Color Warper way. Let's disable this and let's add another serial node. We're going to call it CW, standing for Color Warper. And over here, we are going to come to our Color Warper tool. There's a spider's web kind of icon and we click that and we get a sort of spider's web looking diagram that can be modified. The biggest benefit that is clearly visible is basically we can point anywhere in our shot and it's going to tell you exactly where the hue of that color lies within the map of color data. As we notice here right now, we cannot see your point located near any of the handles. What we can do over here is we can increase the number of hue points that we have and we can increase the number of saturation points that we have. We can see that the edges are more saturated, the center is desaturated and the hue has been laid out according to the HSP color model. Now, in this part, we are just not going to touch anything else. We are just going to discuss the HSP model. But as you can see, there's also an HSY representation of color and there's an HSL representation of color as well. 
but for simplicity's sake, for this part, we are just going to focus on HSP. So, let's increase the number of controls on our color hue spider web. Let's go for 12. And now you can see that we actually have a handle near our reference point where the color data is located. So, all we have to do right now is to pick the point up so that we can take the color information in any direction. And right now, let's just move it toward more saturated blues. And there it is! With just a few simple mouse drags, we have fixed our shot's sky and we have done a simple shot matching without much effort. So not only you can see where the data is located in the color map over here, but the manipulation of the color data becomes extremely easy because you are not only controlling one element of color, that is the hue, but you are also controlling hue's saturation aspect as well. So it's much easier to manipulate that as compared to coming down to our HSL sliders and playing with multiple curves to achieve the same result. So let's see how this compares with our older manipulation. Let's disable this, let's enable this, let's grab it, and let's go ahead and disable it again. And enable our color warper manipulation. You can see that our color warp manipulation is creating a much denser and more eye-pleasing color as compared to our older manipulations using the hue versus hue and hue versus sat and hue versus luminance sliders. Also, it seems to be much closer to the color match target that we were trying to achieve. So. There are two obvious benefits of using the Color Warper tool over the Hue vs. Hue and Hue vs. Luminance and Hue vs. Saturation sliders. First of all, it's easy to manipulate color because of the way it's represented and the color is mapped. And secondly, you can point anywhere on the screen and look. It will tell you exactly where the color data is located on the map. That's it for this video. This was part 1 of the Color Warper tutorial series. In the next part, we will discuss the toolset that's been provided by Resolve to manipulate your shots according to your aesthetic choices. There's going to be the third part as well, in which we are going to develop color looks using the Color Warper tool. Film stock looks are making a comeback, and now that film negatives are frequently scanned, graded and exhibited digitally, it is easy to overlook the fact that they were once printed back to another film stock. Soon our Power Grey 2023 will be released and it is going to involve a negative film emulation as well as a positive film emulation, which is meant to give you the flexibility to modify the color components of negative film and print film individually. Make sure to sign up for our newsletter Subscribe and click on the bell icon and follow us on Instagram at colorist.factory to stay updated on our Power Grade release.